Welcome to another Zelda podcast. I'm David, your host tonight, and tonight I'm joined by a co-host, a very special co-host, Andy. Oh, I almost said Andy of Zelda, but is is your YouTube channel Zelda? Is that supposed to be your name on YouTube, Andy? I I always introduce myself as Andy from Zelda because the channel okay. actually started out, started out with me and a friend, but I mean he kind of just fell out of it after the first after recording his first video. So it's basically been me since from the get go. Uh, but I, I was Andy saying, from, hey, I'm, I'm Andy your host, from Andy from Zelda. So. Andy from Zelda. I love it. I love it. That's great. Uh, so some of our listeners, might they, they, they might know you from your YouTube channel, but they may or may not realize that you've been kind of on the AZP team here for a couple years as a blog writer for us. Yeah, I think I've been, was on the Spooky Spots. Have I been on another episode? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was on the Spooky Spots a couple years ago, but. Now I'm starting to get confused if I'm, if I'm just remembering seeing you in production meetings or if I'm remembering them to be actual episodes. It might have only been Spooky Spots. I think so. I can't remember. I think Have I you been in a quiz episode yet? I'm I don't sorry, think no. I was in a quiz. I wrote a few questions. And like the quiz episode came out like a, over like a year, year and a half after we did the That's had right. the, all the blog writers compile that. So I had almost completely forgot about forgotten about those. That's right. I remember <laughs> that. Yeah, we're definitely going to do some kind of quiz episode this season as well. We're trying to figure it out right now. But um, yeah, so that's that's right. I forgot about spooky spots, and you were kind of new to the team at the time, if I recall yes. correctly. Yes, yeah, very, very new. I think could... that I was only on there for maybe just a few months. <laughs> so, well, anyway, um, we, 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 I basically, we talked about, um, you and I would kind of chat back and forth and I basically said, Hey, anytime you find yourself in Chicago, let me know. And we're going to try to find a way to record some episodes over two years later. Here I am. So. <laughs> That's what I was. It took two years. <laughs> two years. Here you are. You're in town for like a swim meet or, yeah, match or... A, a swim meet. Yes. Yeah, cool. Uh, and like, it's not, it's not like super competitive. I, I, honestly, I don't even know how competitive it is. It's with, I know Purdue university is going to be there. Cause I'm from UT Dallas. Okay. So yep. we're, it's kind of just our swim club. We don't have an official team. We're not a very athletic school. We're a more of a nerd school, like Whoa. engineering STEM, that kind of stuff is what UT Dallas is mainly, mainly known for. So I'm, I, this is actually my first year back coming from high school. So I'm like, haven't really been an athlete for three years so i just joined the club and i'm just here to have a good time my last year of college basically so i see i mean it's fun i getting to travel have i mean it, Chica- i'm in chicago I, this is my first time in chicago oh, uh, today you flew in today this is I your flew first in today, day in chicago morning. as we record and i'm actually running off of two and a half hours of sleep right now so how are you even <laughs> putting sentences together you're doing a better job than i am i don't know college it it changes you. <laughs> well, I, mean, today, I don't need to tell you about that, actually. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm in the thick of it too now with this new thing that I'm yeah. doing with returning students and stuff like that. That's my. I'm in my. I'm technically a junior right now. I have another okay. year. I, I if it, it, there's a version where I might have to do three more you're semesters. In a, you're in a three year program, right? Well, I was in a. I'm in a four year program, but because of when I went to school the first time, there was enough credits that transferred. I was oh, a okay. film major the first time. And there was enough of those credits that were able to transfer into this like podcasting major. So you basically have a year's worth of credits, essentially. Exactly. So okay, when, I, cool. when I started a year ago, two years ago, as we record this, I kind of came in as a sophomore, even though it's all kind of blurry as yeah. to really what I am. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like after like what twenty years, you kind of like, I, dude. If I can't, if I can't even imagine. I know I would. I can't even remember stuff like math I did from two years ago. So, well, yeah, it did take a little. There was like genuine anxiety of like walking into my first class and stuff like that, and trying to figure out if I even like knew how to do all, any of that anymore. But I'm realizing right now, as we sit here, you're in school the first time, and so you you actually are the age of a lot of my fellow students that I'm in my <laughs> classes with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's been a real trip. But I don't know. This isn't <laughs> this isn't a show about returning student. But but um, but yes, yeah, s- school, college, crazy stuff. The swimming's awesome. We are going to be talking about oddities today that's the episode yes yeah that was i know it was a horrible transition but i just wanted to get it in there in the first couple minutes of this episode um today we're going to be building a top 10 list a classic top 10 episode and when we were and you and i were zooming about this when we were zooming when we were having a meeting a production meeting about recording today Mm -hmm. um i know we had a couple ideas on the table but then somehow we kind of came across like what if we talk about just super weird moments or things that pop up in Zelda games? Because that can happen. I think we might have been talking a little bit about when you're studying lore for your YouTube channel. Yeah, we kind of had two different takes. I think I kind of have a hybrid of both of those where some things like lore that just don't make any sense and some things in Zelda I just find weird. So like, yeah, like, why is that? Why was this put into the game? We Okay, I think that's where I'm at too. Basically, I, my five here are we had to do listener feedback too but my five here i'm kind of excited to meet you in person right now honestly yeah. it's, it's a, yeah, that's why it, i'm like i'm it, like all over experience. the place it is cool it, it's cool to meet the people oh anyway okay blah 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 um um 
yeah, I used to, like I joked, I used to joke sometimes once in a while, someone out in the real world will recognize me from AZP. And I'm, I'm usually more excited. That kind of was what happened with Hercano yeah. in Mexico, actually. I'm more <laughs> excited to meet them, I think, than the other way around yeah. sometimes. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I'm waiting for that experience. Like, I have like 37,000 subscribers. I'm still waiting for that for that moment to happen to me. But <laughs> see, what is it? Is it because they have to see your face or something? I'm not sure. Yeah, my face isn't really shown all that often in, uh, right. in my YouTube videos. I think I have like a comment reaction, like an anniversary and maybe some Q&As. Oh, yeah. I remember for when you made milestones, that. something like that. Yeah. But otherwise, like my face usually isn't shown in my videos. People who listen to this show probably already know about your YouTube channel, Zelda. But actually, let's, have, let's let you pitch it for a second here, right off the top. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, uh, have I introduced it since the episode started? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, man, I'm rambling so oh, bad Oh, do you know right what now. it was? It was I was I said the whole, like, Andy from Zelda thing in the beginning. But yeah, we didn't, that, but, that's what it was. But what, what was the concept and what does it do? Yeah, so I can just go in and kind of how I got into this. Um, so, basically, I... About a few, just a few years ago, I actually wasn't paying any attention to Zelda. So I'm, I guess I'm going to go kind of a look, get a little bit personal if you don't if you don't mind. No, that's fine. Let's why this. I got into this. Hey, it's season six, man. So We're... it was like 20, it was 2020, I think. Uh, yeah. So I was a, a freshman in college and I hadn't played Zelda in like years. Uh, I got Skyward Sword 2014, loved it and got Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Wasn't a big fan of the Wind Waker. Um, I never really got through Wind Waker it. HD? No, just like the, the, the original, Game, original yeah, yeah, GameCube yeah, yeah. version. And then I got Twilight, so I kind of got bored around Dragon Roost Island. I kind of just stopped playing and then picked, started Twilight Princess. Yeah. But then I kind of had like a breakup and while I was like shortly, out, and I don't know, I just, I just kind of just kind of stopped and yeah, it I wasn't, it. it was subconscious. I just didn't touch it for years. My sister started playing Twilight Princess January of 2020. And so I saw that I'm like, oh my God, I totally forgot about Zelda. So I went through, started Twilight Princess from scratch, fell in love with the series again. And those were the that was my only Zelda experiences to that point was just to me Spirit Tracks as a young kid, yeah, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess when I was a mid teenager, yeah, and, and then coming in, and I, I'm doing the math right now. Breath of the Wild was out during this yes, story. Yes, the 2020. So yeah, so early February, like literally right before the pandemic happened, like because right when the pandemic hit, you couldn't find a Switch anywhere. Yeah. So I, like literally just a couple weeks before everything shut down, I bought a used Nintendo Switch on eBay mm -hmm. for like ninety dollars. Oh. So I was able to then just buy a virtual copy of Breath of the Wild that. That's in Breath of the Wild is like what me like wow there is so much Zelda out there I have not experienced yet, and so going through I'm like wow Breath of the Wild it actually establishes a lot of lore and ties stuff together whereas some of the older games it's it's there but it's a it's a little bit choppy you know so even this kind of like seeking of lore which is what you mostly focus on on your yes. channel um it feels like that didn't even really trigger until just a couple years ago yes because uh, I've always like enjoyed I've been I, even though I never played Ocarina as a kid I do like. I had friends who played Zelda, like who had older brothers who were very, who had the N64s and through Smash Bros. Melee and such. I was vaguely familiar with some like concept of Redeads because totally. the Redeads appeared in Smash Bros. Yep. So I, I was aware. I knew that like Sheik was Zelda and all that stuff going in. But so the lore intrigued me and I would like read about it online, but I ne had never played most of the games. So I, I kind of just want, started watching a bunch of YouTube videos, learning about the lore and theories ah. and that. Does. And I was like, man. And after I started I working as a college, I'm like, man, how, how can I listen to this at work? So I just Googled Zelda podcast, how I found ACP. Wasn't what I was looking for, but it was uh, it was something great. Oh, finding this show. Yeah, because I was initially looking for lore podcasts, but there weren't really any out there. So instead, I was like, hey, it just like the description was like two friends, Dave and Kate, something like talk, talk about Zelda. I'm like, oh, yeah. that that sounds good. And they had a lot of good reviews. So I tried it and I'm like, well, this it's really great. Good inspiration. I had a, had all these ideas for lore pop into my head. Just listening to you guys talk about it. Interesting. it was not even directly stuff you guys like. It was like you guys don't really talk about theories all too much. Right. It's just, just you know? like one thing you guys say has like inspires a whole other idea. Sometimes it's just remembering a certain area of a certain game and then it triggers all those thoughts. Yeah. Like, Oops, I just hit I know, it's, it's fine. So like, I was just kind of like desperate to like someone to sh share these ideas with while I was at work. And I'm like, man, I should start a YouTube channel. Like, yep. Um, yep. Th there it was. So I like even wrote into you. I was like, Hey, I love this podcast. Um, it's kind of inspired me to start this YouTube channel. Yeah. I, I, and, I remember some of that discourse going back and yep. forth. It was very cool. Yeah. It was anyway, cool. so I think I rambled on a little too long yeah, about myself. But if people yeah. want to find it, it's just Zelda on YouTube. Yeah, right? Zelda on yeah. YouTube. You can just youtube.com slash at Zelda. A bunch of theory videos, lore videos. Yeah, it's like lore videos. Actually, one of my uh, most popular series, like I didn't intend this to be such a long series, but it, it's literally been my source of income Is for the last the one two where years. You, like, Link's Loves. The, yeah. yeah, so it's yeah. Link's, Link's Loves. I did it because I know another YouTuber, Nintendo Black Crisis. Mm -hmm. Like he started right when Breath of the Wild came out. And his second video ever 
basically got him monetized when going from zero subs to th- to a few thousand. Yeah. So I figured I'd give that a shot. And my first one didn't really take off. Rex, I, I had no the first subs. video. Yeah, my my first my first thing's loves, which was my third or fourth video I ever oh, posted. Right, right, right. Then a couple couple months later, um, a Majora's Mask video theory I made. Uh, really took off and got me monetized, got me a few thousand subs. Yep. And then right when that one j- jump started, my Link's Loves one gained a lot of attention. So I made another one for Breath of the Wild, and that one to date has blown up. And I think it has almost 1.2 million views right now. Wow, people love the relationship <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I mean, we did a Link's Loves episode as well, and in like yeah. early season one or something like that. And people, I don't know, it's just a fun thing to do. Sometimes. Yeah, it's there's a lot of. Uh, it's never really. I think yeah, part of it is it's, it's not be- canon, but like, there's a lot of groundwork in some of the games. Uh, yeah, but I also think like the lore or the canon kind of supports it because in some games, Link and Zelda are directly romantic, and in some games they're not at all. And so it really does give yes, the opportunity like, to do these ships and stuff like that. In fact, um, like Spirit Tracks, I think actually has one of the strongest. I mean, okay, maybe other than Skyward Sword, but like Spirit Tracks actually is a really strong case. And I made a video about that one too with the wind, uh, the Wind Waker and Spirit Tracks. Oh, wow. And like, yeah, because like they, they hold they hold hands and such, and they, they have a lot of uh, gestures and such. And oh man, we are already tracks. starting this show. And we haven't even done listener feedback, but oh, I'm loving this. Yes, <laughs> it's totally. I'm totally fine with it. I have a question because um, you, I think you know that one of my like what Dark Horse games is Spirit Tracks. I haven't. It's like one of the few Zeldas I haven't played yet. You just. I think you talked about that in the last couple episodes. I bring it up often. I think we need to do a playthrough, David. <laughs> well, maybe that's maybe we figure out the next time you're in Chicago or the next time I'm in Texas, and that's we uh, wait a playthrough. Yes. Oh, oh, I was well, like a review, I, I, I accidentally review episode. heard like a like review, a review episode. Uh, yeah, re- yeah, okay. I usually do like a playthrough of it, but like it can take up to a year usually to get through to get through we'll, that, right? We try to do two loosely, we try to do about two review episodes a season. Okay. Um, and that usually requires playing we we play through the game again, you know? Yeah. And in the olden days, I would only do the review episodes with Kate, but the AZP team has grown so much now that I'm starting to think like, well, maybe we just start whoever wants to participate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if there's a Majora's Mask, our listeners have been asking for a Majora's Mask one for for seasons. And um, oh, we haven't done Majora's Mask yet. Well, well wow, okay. no, yeah. Every time I'd say, <laughs> wow, Kate, why, why don't we that. do a Majora's Mask review? She'd be like, no, no, I hate the clock. <laughs> what? Oh, that's what I love that aspect of the game. I'm, I'm actively playing Majora's Mask on my uh, Switch Online right now okay and i'm falling in love with it all over again yeah i, ju- I, ju- I just finished a playthrough um i think a month and a half ago it's yeah. such a good such it's a good stuff game. let's get into our listener feedback yeah. <laughs> here we are probably like 20 minutes into the episode i and- think we might be i'm looking at i don't know where the timer is but it doesn't even matter it's fine yeah so, yeah so the oddities um what one thing i did want to say is yeah i think we're we might be on the same page my five were anything that was so crazy that it almost took me out of the game. Not, not in a negative way, but just like yes. a real like, what is this? Um, either moment, object, item, or enemy character. And actually, as we've been talking, I think I just had three more things I kind of wanted to replace on my list. So, so I have a bunch of honorable mentions too. Maybe we can like just do that or or actually um, when we take our break, I can you can like update it a little okay, bit. Okay, yeah, sure. Sounds right good. now, let's do listeners feedback. I only have three today. Um, one is, I believe over on, this looks like it might be Twitter. <laughs> Um, w or no, maybe this is YouTube. W Yar Yarbro Yarbro, um, and I on this screenshot I actually don't know what video it's on, but here uh, W Yarbro says, David, I have heard you talk about the way you play Zelda games, specifically Breath of the Wild. I play the same way. I avoid fast traveling, turn off as many HUD elements as possible, and just try to soak in the details. It's a great way to experience the world. Thoroughly enjoying the podcast. Great job. Thank you, W. Yar- <laughs> Yarborough. Um, yeah, I do. I, I, I don't. I, it's not like I'm trying to play on hard mode. Yeah. I just really, I find that, especially with Breath of the Wild, if I do have the HUD up, a lot of times I'm looking at the mini map more than I'm looking at the screen. Yeah. Sometimes, like, oh, am I on the road? Am I on the path? And, um, um, or I'm looking at the temperature sensors or the sound sensors that are on the screen, and that's fine. That's really helpful. But sometimes I'd rather just use the cues, the visual cues of the game. Yeah. And I'm someone who does like to be out in the wilderness in the real world. And I find that when I play Breath of the Wild, I have much more enjoyment just visually cataloging the topography and kind of not getting you know th- thrown around that way and playing that way. And, and also, it's true, I often don't fast travel, not because I'm trying to make it more difficult, but it's just a little bit more emotional. So it's more like, yeah. oh, I have to go all the way over to Hatno to, to get those arrows or change my clothes colors or or something like that. I don't know. How do you 
Uh, I'm Zelda actually games. the same way. I like. I am not a fan of the fast travel features typically in Zelda games. I love it's just a, a kind of enjoying. I love, especially Twilight Princess. Like I, yes. I wish like the warps. I would be perfectly fine if none of the warps even existed. Mm-hmm. To be completely honest, because I think there's a lot of beauty in Twilight Princess's overworld. So I just often just. Uh, Grab some grass and call a pony and just ride, just ride totally. through the overworld and just enjoy the experience. Because it's just as enjoyable. You're absolutely yes. right. And Breath of the Wild too. I mean, Breath mm-hmm. of the Wild's so vast. You kind of need to have some. I think with over, um, 120 shrines or, or 120 war points plus more, with, if you include the DLC, mm-hmm. it's a bit excessive in my opinion. Oh, but a- there's, I, there's no reason because you get the can you even get the master cycle there's no reason to have a horse because you can just teleport <laughs> anywhere you want to go I, I i know what you mean with the teleporting in breath of the wild i i do want to point out i 100 still use the pause menu map like i definitely am always oh, looking yes. at the pause menu map <laughs> and you might even like if you have the down the dlc you might use that x feature to see where there's been some spots that you haven't been 100 use all of that but just on the screen yeah i do kind of like to um not fast travel and have the hud turned off the when we did our our Wind Waker, which was kind of a Wind Waker HD review episode back in like I don't know season two or something like that, mm-hmm. I didn't even know that the tornadoes were fast travel. Oh really? Well, okay, because I just I, never tried. I didn't until I looked up a guide. To be fair, I'm just like tornado, avoid that. And yeah, me too. <laughs> and I think I, if I remember correctly, it was years ago. But I think Kate said something like, "Oh, and then you can use the tornadoes to teleport." Oh, I know what it was. There's one part where you have to tornado. To teleport into that one island that you can yeah and there's into. like yeah. a god like some god or fish yeah. in there that's like hey you hey you can summon my winds and yeah I, the, the frog guys I, I have all, i've only done one full or twi- uh, sorry wind waker playthrough and uh, I, i'm i'm not gonna try to bad mouth wind waker because yes I, everyone has their tastes but mm-hmm. I, I don't know i wind waker just did not sit right with me i did i did enjoy the hd update and the things that were updated i heard there were a lot of quality of life because like there's tingles extortion quest they're getting yes. the, for the triforce there's shards of, and the maps for those yeah there's a lot of quality of life improvements but they kind of dialed it back you know how like majora's mask 3d made like massive changes and it almost changes the the play style a little bit like and how like you eyeball on you every single boss yeah, yeah it really kind of changes things with the wind waker hd i feel like it was pretty tasteful and it was really just patching over some quality of life nothing i think i think if you play wind waker hd you can say you've completely played wind waker okay i mean i guess you could say that about majora's mask 3d too uh yeah yeah i, I am gonna give it a shot at some point hopefully within the next year or so what's but. that majora's mask 3d uh no wind oh, waker wind waker HD. HD. yeah yeah well yeah I'm, I'm you know now that tears of the kingdom is on its way it's probably out by the time this episode goes out um all right, now the clock is ticking on those Twilight yes, Princess so, Wind Waker <laughs> HD releases on the Switch. You know, in a, probably next year, this year's Tears of the Kingdom. Next year, it'll be some little indie game thing with Link in it. The year after that, hopefully, it'll be one of these HD well, releases. I'm actually out. playing through uh, Twilight Princess HD right now in 2K using uh, an emulator because I've been using those to get my um, like my 2K resolution footage so I can like zoom in some yeah. in my YouTube videos just to do some special effects and just have higher res. It, it, it's so cool. I'm loving the effects, especially playing around with. I have a free camera wow. mod. For Breath of the Wild, we with, so I, I'm playing with this in two. So you can literally take the camera, remove all the HUDs, and just take it away from Link and go. Like you can go under the world and kind of see what the models are inside, like from underneath the world of Hyrule. It's kind of, kind of trippy just seeing how what like what they actually modeled, what they did it, like especially underneath the Great Fairy Fountains. Don't get me started on that. Oh, and yeah. It looks really crazy, but yeah, you can take the camera anywhere, do some cinematic shots. I've it's heard really cool that the water in Breath of the Wild is like a one solid plane, and then they pull it up where there is supposed to be water in the world and so that's how they have the that's how the puddles form is that they yes. increase the vertical vector of this water so if you go underneath do you just see it's wacky almost blankets it's, of it's water? Al- yeah it's almost invisible at some point with a little bit of like a hud you can see little planes or like triangles oh, appearing I see. almost well, let's like, do, oh yeah sorry oh so i was just gonna say no, please. water waterfalls like if you uh, like at the great plateau if you see a waterfall it can get really weird if you could take it under the map but that that's a that's a tangent interesting <laughs> That's that sounds like a special treat. All right, so happy you two are back together. This is an iTunes review. So you know, I was just talking about how like the team has gotten so big, but of course, episode, season one and two, where it was just Kate and I, is still out there, and a lot yeah. of times people start at the beginning of the show. Yes, and so sometimes we get this one's current. This is just from a month or two ago. Oh wow! But you know, maybe this person listened is is somewhere in season one and two and hasn't been introduced to the full team yet. Nevertheless, uh, Mickey five eight seven eight said. You two give me some time to drift back to my childhood. Hope comments like this make you smile like you two do for your listeners. Three hearts. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Mickey. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, and let's see. I think we'll do our last one here and we'll get into our 
<laughs> oh, it's Paul. Paul. Paul Atsk. He's he's left many comments on the show, and he pops up in our listener yep. feedback all oh, the time. I just my mic. Oh, sorry. No <laughs> idea. No no idea who this person is in the real world, but but Paul Act as a or Atsk as a supporter and a listener of AZP has been pretty present over the seasons. Here he says quickly on the favorite Zelda TV commercials, which was the first episode of season three. Um, Paul says. Let's make hashtag okay buy a rally cry for the show, shall we? <laughs> That's fine. That's cool. I do think um, Celeste and I were joking in a production meeting the other day that um, we should make an okay buy T-shirt, probably at least for oh, the that, store. That uh, that'd be uh, pretty iconic. I maybe think. it's maybe it's the Zel- the AZP logo on the front, and then maybe on the back it just says okay buy. I don't know. Is that rude though? Like people are like okay buy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would wear that. I'm kind of antisocial in real life, so. <laughs> but I think on the back, I think it, it has to be on the back of the shirt. So like yeah. as the person turns it, around. All right. I'm going to load up my list here. Um, why don't we, Andy, why don't we have, would you be comfortable getting started? I'd, I'd like yeah, to go. Sure. I'd like to, I tell you what, maybe I go first so that you can have the final, the final one as okay. we get to the other side. That's usually what I do when new people are on the show. The only thing is, is that I'm pulling it up on my drive right now. So I need you to vamp a little bit. Can you talk to me a little bit more while I load my file about what kind of criteria you used as you picked some of your um, entries for this list? Okay. Uh, yeah. So when we were kind of discussing this episode, uh, we weren't really sure. Like, I think my, my ideas with more thing, uh, more things that just didn't really make any sense in the lore. Uh, but, you know, that kind of seemed like a lot of work. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I, well, so yeah. I, I can have, I have, uh, so I kind of have a blend of both, like things that are just like flat out weird in Zelda games that kind of like just take you at like, cause Zelda games often you find yourself immersing yourself into the story or just into the experience. But then there, there's always those like moments that just take you like, wait, what the heck is this? And like, why was this included into the game? So it's kind of a, so some of my things on my list are things that for me, the lore is a huge experience. I like to immerse myself in it. So when there is huge obvious um thing like um discrepancies yeah or things that con- seem to contradict other games uh those ca- always ca- uh stick out like a sore thumb to me so i, w- I hear you i have i have <laughs> a bunch of honorable mentions too and i was just looking at my list and i think i did get it up thank you very much um i think i'll go with my my lowest of the five okay. as we go up here and this one is i actually had this in a different position in the list but ended up having to be my first entry because i think it's kind of an obvious choice but for me the Oku super um, kind of creeped me out. And the first time yes. I encountered one in Twilight Princess, I definitely was like, what the heck is going on? And what is that? And why Why is this in a Zelda game? The, yeah, the high-res, uh, yeah, the high-res textures for the Uka, for the Uka, they're terrifying. Uka, yeah. That's Just the, re- the red eyes, the hu- humanoid face on a chicken. Like, yes. Oh, man. I and I know everybody talks about how they're kind of based off of this artwork of one of the MC Escher things or something like that. Um yeah, but I think in the lore, you probably know more about this than I do. Aren't they like loosely aliens? They talk about being from the sky and stuff like that. Or yeah, like- that's there's all kinds of theories out there, and I I, I still haven't done a video about this because it's always fascinated me. But yeah, there's there's really nothing to go off of because mm-hmm. um, I mean, we have a few different wind tribes. Like there's Skyloft, obviously people in the sky, but mm-hmm. um, some a lot of them came down um, after Skyward Sword. Like we have remnants and some people are said to have stayed up based on the books, but we don't really yeah. know for sure. There's also the wind tribe from a uh, Minish cap. Minish cap. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise there's not really any other like uh, people, people who uh, have lived in the sky that we know of in the Uka don't really seem like humanoid figures. Not they have the all. faces, but like these chickens who somehow built this city in the sky. And, and it, even it's, when, it's nothing like Skyloft either. You know, I think there was a time where on an early, early AZP episode, and maybe it was Kate and I, um, we started spitballing ideas a little bit, and we kind of thought that maybe the the Uka didn't build the city in the sky, but like inherit it or took it. Yeah, because it doesn't the the the, the architecture in that city in, in Twilight Princess doesn't seem to line up with the biology of the Uka. You yes, know what I mean? They like, don't seem like they're physically capable of constructing things. <laughs> yeah, I agree, and and furthermore, like there's kind of like relatively normal size doors and archways and paths and walls and things like that yes that didn't that i think if you saw a culture like the like the minish or the picori they they build small things because they're small yes you know what i mean it's very clearly like their culture anyways so maybe the uka and then actually one one other thing i had here on my list uh, for this is that things only get more 
most of my list is not things that are weird, but this entry is a thing that was weird for me when I first experienced yeah. it. It was it did make me come like it pulled out of the game just for a second when I had to kind of yeah. process what this One creature thing was. I don't, I don't know if I'm tr- if I'm accurate by saying this, but I think there may be a quote something from Twilight Princess that does like say that the uk- like Ukins the the Uka had some technology like there's the Dominion Rod you find in the Temple of Time, and like yeah. I. Th- Online, I think it's like the Zelda fandom site or something. They have some kind of, I don't know if it's even source, but they claim that it's like Uka, uh, Uka technology, mm. which doesn't really make any sense to me. Because like, how would they have created that technology? So I don't know, remember <laughs> what the source was, or even if there was one, maybe it was just the Hyrule Historia who may, may, maybe just kind of wrote that in before they, <laughs> they, they didn't actually have a quote or anything to kind of base that off of. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they were doing their own theory there so a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I always have to use the, Hyrule Historia Encyclopedia as like secondary, or secondary, secondary, secondary sources. Yeah. Uh, so if it's kind of supports an idea, I mean, just go with it. Um, but if it contradicts what's in the games, like don't, you don't obviously can't. It. Yeah. Um, the one little thing, other thing I wanted to say about the Uka is that when you use the little floating head Uka for save points and stuff, it just gets weirder. Oh yeah. Now you just have a flying head. But how, how does that anatomy work? Do you just, when it's born, <laughs> does it just have a head and then it, as it ages, it grows a body. <laughs> I think. I think that. I think that w- when it comes to the Uka, there almost isn't a biology that exists. Maybe they are slightly what we might call magical or something like that. You know. Yeah. If we ever had like a Twilight Princess like TV show or movie, I, I definitely <laughs> think that that should just have been a gameplay mechanic, and I don't know if they should be included. <laughs> Th- those things might be nightmare fuel if they were to oh. be realized in like live action. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, man, Ocarina of Time with dead hands and stuff. I. I think they'd have they'd have to cut back a lot because just putting that in there, otherwise it could easily go into rated R content. <laughs> I, I I concur. So what is the first one on your list here? Uh, the first one, actually, meaning on like the list, lowest, yeah. Uh, I made the mistake of just putting ordinary bullet points instead of uh, numbering these. <laughs> um, so <in> my, <laughs> so you're picking so as you go. Five. Yes, I'm gonna kind of be picking as I go. No problem. Um, but I. I'm going to go with the great fairies just in the games in general. It's, okay. Uh, obviously a dominantly um, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, um, just the design. It's always disturbed me and the sound effects, especially when they make it. I always have to like mute. I love playing. I, I cannot play video games with a volume muted. My sister always has games muted for some reason. Oh, really? Play, and I don't know why. Cause she loves Zelda music, but she always has the game like either turned on minimal or com- oh, the like, sounds part of the experience. Muted. I know exactly. Like, occasionally, a hand like a Game Boy game, you can turn it down or yeah, something. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like it's it's a regular thing for her, and I I, I criticize her every hmm. single time. I'm like you have to play with sound. Does she then like just listen to music or something? Or I, I, honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, cool. No, no judgment, but <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's uh, it bothers. But anyway, so I, I, <laughs> anyway, great fairies. I don't I, I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too side railed. Uh, we do <laughs> picking at a scab there. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cassie, listen if, sis Ca- yeah cassie if you're listening to this <laughs> shame on you but <laughs> anyways but yeah great fairies like every time when you first enter the temple like they come out and they do like have their little sh- i don't want to say screech what's the what's a better word for it oh they, that, they, 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 yeah whatever it is like, yeah oh, i think it's uh, something like that it just sounds so disturbing i feel like the re- the the performance is not a screech but the way that the file is processed and the way, it's, the way it's delivered, I think it's in Screech territory. Yes, it's just just the both the aesthetic and the and the sounds are just disturbing. And, and if you had just your parents listening as you're playing as a kid, it sounds borderline sexual. So yes, uh, both aesthetics and sound. So it, it's just not something you want to hear. Like you just want to skip through. Give give me my <laughs> dins fire or whatever I need, and please <laughs> let me leave. Uh, <laughs> and it, honestly, like I love Twilight Princess, but it actually gets worse because um, Twilight Princess actually, I think, experimented a little bit with borderline with almost nudity in Twilight. Prin- I don't remember yes. the great fairies in Twilight Princess. I remember them being well, there almost was like statue. There, there was one, one great fairy, yeah, and it was in the Cave of Ordeals. Um, oh, yes, and it's like this young, like green-haired fairy. Um, so it t- takes the appearance of like a of like a young girl almost. Interesting. Um, and, it, and it's like completely topless, basically. It, it, the only thing covering is like just hair, like strains of hair. Yeah. They were trying to down, have so. Twilight Princess be a little more mature. Yes, it and was so the first I, one I, to have I, blood, I, first game to have blood. Uh, yeah. I, well, oh, all kind of time, Ocarina kind of did, but with, then they switched it. Remember? Yeah. Well, also the Shadow Temple Ocarina, where it's like oh, it, it's kind of blood. Good call. So yeah, there's there's like blood on the floors. There I actually think, is. You're right. Uh, there's the dead hand, which I mean, it's kind of just like red blobs, but you, you know yeah, what? I, I mean. think there's blood on there. You're right. I I uh, I'm mistaken, 
But like, it's like I don't remember Twilight this Princess more realistic looking. Princess. Yeah. In the in the I don't know if I've encountered this fairy in in a playthrough at all. Yeah, it's it's pretty obscure. You have to go to, into the cave or, of ordeals in the Gerudo Desert. Um, and I think every ten levels or so, you there's like a it's like a stopping oh, point for you to like you can choose to leave. Is the cave of ordeals? It's like a little gauntlet or something. Yes, it's one. Of the, I think it's like a fifty stage gauntlet. I one hundred percent didn't do that. I don't think. I don't. <laughs> I think I've never done. I, it. I don't think I've completed it. I see. Uh, on the Wii, because I only have, I've only played it all the way through on the Wii version. I'm just now starting a playthrough. I think I'm at going into the lake bed temple on hmm. my live streams on Twitch right now. But oh. uh, it, uh, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to get to that. I'm definitely going to beat it now that I'm on a controller, not the Wii. Anyway, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the motion control. I find it part of the experience, yes. but it, 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 it's hard. It, 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 does, it does make it harder than just button mashing, which I appreciate. Um, yeah. I, I think it should be a little bit more difficult to get through a Zelda game. I think I, um, I've said it many times on this show, but I, when it comes to twilight princess, I consider it a GameCube game, not even a Wii game. Cause it was, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like technically, Breath of the Wild is a Wii U game. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm. I'm still getting used to doing all the hidden skills and such with buttons instead of like, oh, like thrusting the shield forward and then uh, like, oh, like, uh, moving the nunchucks to left while pressing A to like jump to the side and do like a back so, slice or something. I have a deep cut. Not maybe this isn't a deep cut. I not. I don't even know if it's a confession. I have never played the Wii version of Twilight Princess. Really? So when when it when Twilight Princess came out, I didn't have a Wii yet. It was back in those years where it was really hard to get them. You know what I mean? I think yeah. I got, finally got a Wii like the second or third. I think it was like the third year it was out. And my little sister and I had had to wait in an all night line in the winter at a Toys R Us just to get it. Even the third year later, you know what I mean? Maybe it was the second Christmas. Anyways, um, but I really wanted to play Twilight Princess when when the Wii yeah. came out originally. And I had my GameCube. I loved my GameCube. And so I just bought the GameCube version. And I played that many, many times. And I've actually never put... A, I, I don't even know if I own it. I've never put a Twilight Princess Wii disc into a Wii and, and played with the motion controls. My so you, first motion control was Skyward Sword. So you've never experienced like the overture or something when you put in the disc, you know, the Wii, how it some plays a little intro animation or something. Yeah. Like, like, I think it's just like a kind of a the Zelda main theme. like da, 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 But then it has like the wolf howl or something like that. Oh, wow. Or it's or it goes to the, the, the woman's like high pitched singing voice, something like that. And it gets high because almost like the, you know, how the spirits lament theme. Where the lights, the light spirits, and there's like the. I'm not, oh, not going to yeah, sing yeah, it yeah. for you, but yeah, it's it's <laughs> almost kind of like that tone. It's it, it's a re, it's a really cool experience. Wow! And then and actually, when I started, when I did get my Wii, I would just put my GameCube Twilight Princess into the Wii and then play with a GameCube controller yeah. connected to that. I just always played the GameCube version. So when HD came out for the Wii U, all the buttons were basically exactly the same. I just felt like I was playing something with slightly better graphics. Um, maybe I'll go to my. Oh yeah, my second on the list. Okay. I'll do my second on the list, then we'll do your second. We've got to go to break. Um, so the, this one's kind of a deep cut, and this is a little bit of a confession. This is from a game. Oh, I guess there's two games that I haven't. There's kind of three games that I haven't played. I haven't played Spirit Tracks, Triforce Heroes, or the Game Boy version of Four Swords. Okay. I've played and owned the GameCube ones, Four Swords Adventures. <laughs> I found it at a used video game store about a year ago, and it's, I'll show it to you later. I've got it. It's in box and everything. It's amazing. But um, Such a good game. It is. I actually love the Four Swords Adventures uh, GameCube one. Apparently, the Game Boy one's a little rough around the edges. I've never played it. But this is a reference that um, is from Triforce Heroes. Okay, I've never played that one. And I haven't either. I have three cartridges, but I've just been waiting to play it with some people. Maybe it's one of these easy pe- Whenever we get enough AZP people together on a weekend, it'll have to happen. I actually don't even have a 3DS. Both my siblings did, but I was like, you know what? I'm never going to get one. I've I don't know why I kind of made a vow as a kid when I was like 12 years old. Like, you know, I don't, I don't need one. I'll just wait for something better to come out. And I didn't buy one either. I, I for, for all, almost the entire 3DS life cycle, I just, it never, I kind of like would consider it. And the 2DSs would come out, then the XL would come out. And finally, it was, I finally bought one. It's actually just on the other side of that wall there. It was the Galaxy model. And I think it was technically a 3DS XL because it was the only thing that Nintendo was, it was the only 3DS that was being made. And yeah. definitely I bought it around season two of AZP. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was only just a couple years ago. It was just as they were about to discontinue them. I bought it up, out in the world at a Target, like not used <laughs> on eBay or not on Amazon. I just like saw one at a Target here in the city in Chicago. 
and it was even like one of the small targets. Maybe that's why it was still like okay. On the sh- it was probably so like maybe on it was the just shelf the back, 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 back of the shelf, and they just brought it out to get rid of it. I yeah. think so. I think so. And I saw it, and so I was like, well, I can't hesitate. I'm gonna get it. And I had already been eyeing. I kind of wanted to play Ocarina 3D, Majora's Mask. All that stuff was out already, so that's yeah. why I bought it. It's now now I'm like sacred. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> hang on to this thing. Um, and so I'm playing. I'm kind of playing um, A Link Between Worlds right now on it. But anyway, so this is from Triforce Heroes, one of the 3DS games I haven't played, but I deep dived into my Zelda Encyclopedia a few days ago. I've not seen that that version before. Oh, that's the that's the special edition version, and it actually it comes in like a Nintendo looking case, which is right behind you. But is anyway. it like the same book as like the blue? Yeah, the, the blue pages one? are exactly the same. Oh, okay, it's just a it's a cool looking case. Same content. It's just like cool, cool, cool cover. The pages are kind of gold on the side. So anyway, this is what I did, Andy. I was like. I'm gonna so the so Hyrule Historia is very comprehensive and it it summarizes and goes into detail and all of that. Yeah. Then the Arts and Artifacts book is a lot of fun because it's it's a little bit more broad and it's just about it's a lot, a lot of development and concept artwork. Yeah. Yes. So the Encyclopedia is exactly that. It is deep and dense and um um it's I don't know. Do you have the Encyclopedia? I I have yeah. I've oh, you, so, I so have you're familiar. Those. Okay, cool. So I just went to the. The catalog, the database in the middle of this book, and just started paging through. I think I know where you're getting at, actually. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, I'm gonna just see if something weird pops up that feels like it should not be in a Zelda game. And I never realized until I started perusing, like really like scrubbing through the database in the Zelda encyclopedia, how many costumes there are in Triforce Heroes. You can like put on a bunch of different outfits in Triforce Heroes. Of which I've never done yet because I haven't played this yeah, game. So I've I heard. found <laughs> one outfit that I decided to put on my list here. I've seen some screenshots, but I don't know. I definitely don't know all of them, so I, I, I'm kind of nervous here. There are some it. weird ones, and, and again, it's not just about being weird. It's about what is the what is the least likely thing you're going to see in the Zelda universe, right? Like that's what a lot of my picks are. What are the things that like pull you out? Yeah. Um, I have a picture of it here, so I'm going to flip my phone around and show it to you in a second. However, I decided to pick. I just couldn't. I was paging through. I couldn't. I couldn't get my eyes to move past this thing. So I was like, "All right, this is a valid entry." The showstopper costume. Now, I don't know if that means anything to you costume. or to me. The showstopper I costume from Triforce Heroes. It is Link wearing a gold tuxedo with shorts, a top hat, and feathers, uh, like a feather, like a peacock feather, almost like boa. And this is it right here. Oh my! <laughs> what? <laughs> I have some notes about it. I, I then, once I saw it in the encyclopedia, then I went online and I started researching it a little bit more. It, it partially triggers me that they decided to include Triforce Heroes in like the downfall, t- official downfall <laughs> timeline. But like, I know I'm a Zelda theorist and it's like very controversial, but I kind of like, dis- I love a lot of the games in that, but I kind of like discard that. Like, so that's only like pseudo canon to me. It kind of feels like it got cramped yeah. in, I will admit. Um, um, but so, so as I look at this, there's, so the, the, the tuxedo also apparently in the game shimmers and sparkles all the whole time while you're wearing it. The mechanic is that it attracts the enemy awareness of the person wearing it is like doubled. So in other words, the that bubble of, you know, how if you get close to an enemy in any Zelda game, then they approach. realize you. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they realize you're there. That bubble is twice as large when you wear this. So why is that a good thing? The way it's a good thing is that in Triforce Heroes, there's three links on screen. And so sometimes it's actually beneficial to bait a bad guy in a certain okay. direction so the other links can go around back or do whatever they need to do for boss battles and things like that. So okay. sometimes you wear this costume, proper top hat, proper bow and bow tie. I mean, I, and, and look, it's short. It's, it's he's not even – it's tuxedo <laughs> shorts with the, yeah, with the orange it's, short. It's like – it's yeah, like they're not even full pants. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It feels like you could buy this like on Earth. Anyway <laughs> – um, so that's that, and um, the one thing that's kind of too bad is that if you if you play in single single player mode, this costume has no effect because all the enemies just pay attention to you anyway. So yeah. you can't, like baiting them isn't a strategy that is worthwhile. Yeah, I, I just have a question. I want to know what Nintendo was thinking when they made the like had the idea for that game because we know like a Spirit Tracks came to be because Anuma was reading a children's book to his kids and his, it had trains Ooh, I didn't in it. Know that. That's oh, cool. I, th- I think it's in the I think it's in the encyclopedia or something. This little interview um, uh, included in there, and that's that's basically how he they got the idea for Spirit Tracks. Uh, cool. It was just it completely came from a children's book, uh, which ca- kind of makes sense actually now that you think about it. But uh, I, I just want to know why the entire plot of Tri- Triforce Heroes, as far as I'm aware, is it's not even in Hyrule. It's in Hi- some place called Hytopia. So okay. it's like a basically an offshoot, and. 
the plot is the princess, I think it's Princess Styla, not Zelda. Uh, oh, Styla. Yeah, Styla. Uh, so it's all about fashion. Oh. Yes, Styla. So she, she's cursed sense. by some witch to have to wear some ugly gray jumpsuit. That, that, that's the entire <laughs> point of your quest. To save the princess from this curse from the witch so she doesn't have to wear a brown jumpsuit anymore. That's the whole, like, that's the reason you are on a quest as Link in Triforce Heroes. What's the team? For, as far as I'm aware. I've, I've said it before the show, but I'm blanking right now. What, what's the name of the team that did the Link's Awakening remake on Switch? The production company. Link's Maybe, Awakening. The Link's Awakening one. Because oh, they're God. also the ones that did the Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D mods. I'm not sure, actually. I can't remember. I'll, I'll check on break. We're about to go to break. Okay. I've, I think I literally, I've, I've said this company many times. I, I'm blanking right now. But the the one thing I might have a little bit of an answer for you, that company um, also made Triforce Heroes. Okay. And what happened was they made the Ocarina of Time 3D um, remake. That obviously went over well. Fans were really asking for the Majora's Mask one. That's what fed the Majora's Mask thing. And then this team that did these two things for Nintendo, Nintendo kind of said to them, I'm obviously paraphrasing, but Nintendo said to them, you did a great job with these two. Do you want to make your own Zelda game? <laughs> and they said yes. And they and, and Nintendo was like, we'd kind of like it there to be a multiplayer element. You know, they were they were doing that with Metroid yeah. at the time and a few other things. We'd like there to be a multiplayer element, but why don't you guys go make your own Zelda game? And so a little bit like um Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, those were Capcom's like first, well, not their first games. Oh well, yeah, I guess it was first. They kind of were able to go off canon a little bit and kind of make yeah. up their own thing. Like, almost like what Capcom did with the Oracle series. That's what I'm I think, thinking, yeah. yeah. So there might be, and not not necessarily justification, but there might be some perspective there. That, yeah, <laughs> that, that that would make a lot of sense because the four sword, the whole four swords trilogy, uh, it doesn't all seem to really line up with the rest of uh, canon too much. Uh, yeah, like I, I've tricky. gone through trying to explain, like, oh, where did this four sword came from? Because there's a lot, a lot of cool backstory presented in Minish Cap that I, uh, I've I've tried to do some theories with, but it it, it gets really messy because it's like I've almost had one idea for the. Uh, almost a theory to make where the to claim that the four sword could actually be the could be the master sword. Really? Yes. Yeah, like based on based on some descriptions and such from the uh, uh, from the encyclopedia. I believe this is the encyclopedia. Um, but anyways, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get too far. Too no, far that's that. it's it's been like, it's from, been over a year since I've even had this idea. From so. a development point of view, the four sword was brought into lore just because. Nintendo wanted a, a four-player Mechan- game, game on yeah. the Game Boy so that they could, you know, uh, justify all the link cables and stuff like that. And that went over well enough that also when Four Swords Adventures came out, that's when Nintendo was really pushing the um, Game Boy Advance to GameCube connectivity. That's It was like the same year that uh, Crystal Chronicles came out, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles came out. It was the same year that that versus Pac-Man thing came out. Okay. That's when Four Swords graded. Four Swords Adventures came out, so there was a there was a solid year of the GameCube's life cycle where, and and I actually had enough friends. I had three other friends that had Game Boy Advances, and we all did have our cords, <laughs> so we would get together and we were the weirdos that did actually play all of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles with the cords. <laughs> we actually did play all of uh, um, uh, Four Swords Adventures, and so then, um, oh Grezzo, Grezzo's the name of the company. It just that, hit my head. Okay, yeah, that, that rings a bell. Yeah, so that was Grezzo's first and maybe only original Zelda game was Triforce. Okay. Heroes. I was about to go on a whole thing about the Four Swords, and I think I'm going to hold back uh, because we, <laughs> oh, we have talked to about break, that for a long time. But I think we have to do your second um, entry right now, and then we'll go to break. Yeah, By the I'll way, we're already like 45 quick. minutes yeah, in try, on this episode. This is a marathon episode. Quick. I'm loving it. Um, Sometimes we have longer ones. So this is my number, uh, my number four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm just going to say this one can be the short and sweet one because like, this one, not much to talk about. Just tingle. <laughs> just, just just tingle i almost put tingle on him. yeah yeah <laughs> it's like I, I i i hate tingle i know he's so popular in japan i don't understand why um i think it's i think i think there's something there where the quirkiness he's he's off putting to me as well yes that quirkiness must just maybe there's maybe there's like a a self-awareness in japan or uh there's a certain there's a certain tone of a sense of humor that that we're not getting over here in the yeah. West, that makes Tingle the fact that he's quirky and slightly unappealing is what make is part of the Joker is what makes him appealing. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Yeah, so it makes sense why there were Japanese only releases of certain like like mm-hmm. DS games, but I think in, in the US there was like J- Tingle's uh, Rosie Rupee Land or something like that. And if you, yeah, I, I don't know if you've seen like screen grabs from this game, 
but there's um I some other, I think in that game there's like some other character called I think just Pinkle, and it really really disturbs me because it's like this dude it's it's like this dude's face but it looks like dressed as like a woman fairy almost like all pink and one of the games has yeah, four tingles like, there's four tingles there's well yes yeah oh is that when that, 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 that's a completely separate one that it's oh, like really? david there's like david Ju- yeah when there's david. like david jr yeah and right yeah um so and a bunch of other like two other ones the yeah. others rhyme with tingle it's yes, like tingle biggle wingle and then david, and then david jr david jr yeah <laughs> see maybe that's part of that sense of humor maybe yes. it's supposed to be quirky and a little off yeah it's, I, I get that vibe and i i don't know it just it really disturbs me, especially when how his appearance in Wind Waker, how he was actually like a critical role to the story. Yeah. Whereas like in Majora's Mask, he was kind of just there. You buy maps from, and he's just a simple gameplay mechanic. He doesn't have any influence over the story. Right. Wind Waker, that's not the case. You have to go through, and he has his own like cutscene. Yeah. Um, when you first discover him in like in, in prison of all places, you free him from jail. I guess right. Tinkle had some more crimes, and Link <laughs> frees him. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe the people of Windfall Island had a good reason to keep him in jail. I, I don't know, but he's there. He gives you the Tingle Tuner, yeah. which is a, just another mechanic to use the Game Boy Advances for. Like which I about. used. Back yep. when the first time I played Wind Waker, <laughs> my friend sat next to me, and he literally pulled the ting- He was playing the Tingle Tuner because you know, it gives you a t- top-down view of the map you're on. Okay, and then Tingle can fly around and like actually interact with the map a little bit. It's oh, wow. actually cool. The Tingle Tuner, from a from a concept, from a um, maybe logistics. I don't know. From like a play mechanic thing, it was actually kind of fun. The Tingle Tuner. Okay. Don't know why they themed it to Tingle, but yeah, uh, I'm not gonna ramble too on it. Just it, it really bothers me. It's funny, oh, whenever well, it no, no. In the Zelda the game. mechanic <laughs> was kind of cool. The fact yeah, that yes. it was connected to Tingle, not no, it had nothing. No. had nothing to do with the cool points of this kind of kind of cool. It was kind of cool to see a, a a Mode Seven sprite of the wind. Like if you're on Dragon Roost Island on the Game Boy Advance, you look down on the screen and it's. And it's almost like Mario Kart, but it's the ga- but it's the GameCube game. It, it, yeah. it was kind of cool to see Wind Waker expressed through Game Boy Advance graphics. Let me put it that way. Yeah. One thing I did appreciate that involved Tingle though was in Four Swords Adventures, which Tingle actually has a huge appearance in. Um, if you die, like one of one of the players dies or something, they drop a lot of their Force gems. So Tingle, if there's a huge for- pile of Force gems left over, he will come in on a balloon, slowly go in and like steal your Force gems and fly off the screen with them. But the player can interact. They can, like, shoot Tingle and just, like, bully him around and just not keep knocking him down Ooh. onto the ground. So that's the thing. If you really don't like Tingle, you can let off your steam and just, like, <laughs> use the fire rod or shoot him with bow, your bow. I don't know. I have to – yeah. <laughs> I, the reason I almost put Tingle on my list is because the first time – in those first couple minutes of Majora's Mask – back in 1999 or 2001 or whatever it was when I was playing this in college the first time. Because that Majora's Mask came out when I was, I guess, about your age, maybe a little bit younger. And um, I was playing, and, I, and I'm not a particularly judgy person when it comes to graphics or aesthetic. If, an, if, if there's an art direction that goes in a certain way, I don't, I try to, I like to like things. I try to just kind of be cool with it. But I, when I, shot him with my little Deku bubble and he fell down and started talking to cutscene. I recoiled like in You're my like, seat. I was like, Oh, whoa, oh, Mr. Fairy. Oh, this is this. I do not like this character model. Yeah. Just the way that the nose and the, and the graphics like blended together. And it, it was unfortunately for me, it was off putting in that way. And so in that way, it kind of took me out of the game, which yeah. is why I almost put it on this list. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I, I feel like m- most people here in like in the, in the West, typically they, they don't like tingle, but Japan, I mean, it, it's their games. They, they put what I was <laughs> lucky enough to be, for for about a day, I I kind of participated in the Zelda Dungeon Marathon that was held here in Chicago. Oh, yeah, I remember that episode. Um, By the way, they've invited us back this year to go maybe for Ooh. real. So maybe we'll stay in touch about that. Maybe we can get some AZP team members to come down and hang out with the Zelda Dungeon people. It's, I, it's in a neighborhood about an hour west of where I live right now. Oh, cool. I might be procrastinating my employ- – starting my employment until maybe July. So I might I'm, be I'm around not- when they – I think they do it <laughs> – in June. Anyway, anyway, okay. that's that's a little behind the curtain. But yeah. I got the email from from the team, and I was like, <laughs> I was so smitten to be hanging out with them last year, just to because we like we use Zelda Dungeon, we use Zelda Universe, we use a lot of these yeah. wikis to like check things when we do this show, and um, to, to to kind of be asked to like participate was kind of a cool feeling. So anyway, I'll, I'll have to populate that out to all the AZP people, and we'll have to see. <laughs> but I digress. I think we go to break. Yes. And uh, we'll come back with our final three. Sound good? Yep, sounds great. Cool. Dad. 
Daniel and Chris here from the Turn by Turn podcast. We're excited to announce that our season two is going to be starting up. Something special about this season is that we're going to be talking with indie RPG game developers about their games. And they've been nice enough to give us screenshots and videos that we've attached to the YouTube. So while you're listening, you can also check out that and see what the games look like, as well as hearing the creators talk about their games. We have a lot of really interesting stuff in store, and Chris is on this ad too. Any Anything else to add? <laughs> it's very, very exciting to be talking to lots of game developers, learning about how to make a game, how to release a game, and we still make sure to cover lots and lots of your favorites. So make sure you tune in. Thank you for listening. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe we should write something down. <laughs> I think it, it sounded fairly organic. <laughs> yeah, it did. It's the first day of school, and I'm walking around downtown Chicago with hundreds of other students. Everyone's getting back from summer break, and you can tell that they're happy to see each other after a couple months. For me, however, it's been a little longer. Hi, I'm David, and I want to introduce you to Returning Student, a documentary podcast that I've been making about my return to a college that I left 20 years ago. I'm back in the same city, at the same school, the same student ID number. Everything else feels completely different. My fellow classmates are literally half my age. My professors work in my industry. Sometimes I wonder why I've come back at all. But then I get the opportunity to sit down with one of my professors and have a conversation with them, which uh, usually yields a little bit of wisdom. You can find the show on all major podcast providers, as well as our website, returningstudentpodcast.com. A lot has changed over the past two decades. Hello there, listeners. David here. You know, the whole team at Another Zelda Podcast appreciates every bit of support our listeners give. And if you'd like to enjoy some extra content, we invite you to consider becoming a patron through our Patreon page. Sword members get a thank you on our website, as well as monthly digital wallpapers for all your devices, and the opportunity to participate in an annual meetup on Discord with the AZP team. White Sword members will get everything the Sword tier gets, and also they'll get access to episodes a week early, as well as bonus episodes that we record specifically for Patreon. A new thing we're doing is monthly Discord meetups, where we'll play trivia and hang out with you as well. Lastly, and this is our most popular tier, actually, the Magical Sword level, which includes, of course, everything from the previous two levels, but also gives supporters access to behind-the-scenes videos that we produce and behind-the-scenes extended video versions of every episode. Thank you so much for your time. Let's get back to the show. And if you're already on Patreon, we are so grateful that you're helping us keep another Zelda podcast vibrant. And we are back. Andy. Let's just keep on going. I think I think we've been we've been chatting a lot. I say we just like yeah, we, we just, just gotta, gotta get through these. So Otherwise, good. this is going to be a three-hour episode, <laughs> which would also be fun. But like we, we, well, a little behind the curtain, we're actually recording a second episode tonight that I'm very excited about. That'll be coming up later yes. in this season. Um, this this is probably somewhere around the second episode of our season right now. Okay, and I think the one that we're going to record after this, oh, we're, we'll still got to figure it out. But it might be somewhere around like c- episode number seven or something like that, a little later in yeah. the season. I got to spread you out a little bit. You're here. You're here for one night. But <laughs> yeah, we can't, don't want to do back to back episodes for sure. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go right into my number three here. Of uh, Then later it'll be two and one. Um, number three is, kind of. Pr- I'm kind of proud of this one. It's not an exact thing. Well, I guess it kind of is. It's not an item. It's not an enemy. It's not a story moment. Um, but, oh, hmm. Oh my gosh, I have the hiccups right now. Um, maybe, how do I set this up? Maybe I do it this way. Um, this is... I guess a moment. It's kind of a series of moments, which is why I'm struggling. It's a moment in the original The Legend of Zelda game. So the 8-bit game. Um, I think, so again, my criteria of like strange things that almost pull you out of the game, right? Yeah. So I think everybody kind of, it's almost famous how the translation of the old man is odd in um, the American version of The Legend of Zelda. I think a lot of people always like well, the one that most people get is they'll find him in a little um, secret room and he'll like the, I think the one that most people know is Eastmost yeah. Peninsula is the secret 
Yeah. You know, you, you hear like these that. like wacky hints. And they just have to fit it in into a very condensed message. Condensed yeah. message. And also, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the original Legend of Zelda was translated in Japan the English version. Oh, so they don't so have, a, they didn't have like was, a localization team. Precisely. Okay. Precisely. So essentially it's bad localization or, or, you know, just, you know, I guess, I guess yeah. I say bad. I was trying not to be so negative there. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's, an, there's others old. So the old man, so talking to the old man, but there's a specific one. So in general, the old man and, and his strange, crazy hints in the first Zelda game is my number three on this list. Really? Okay. But specifically there's one here. Um, well, we all, a lot of people also have uh, probably experienced the 10th enemy has the bomb quote. And he's, what he's trying to say is that, and actually I talked about this a little bit in our speed run episode and a little bit in the Hyrule fantasy episode, but there's a, it's the items that appear when enemies are defeated isn't technically random. There's actually huh. a data array. So you can kind of, you can kind of know when a certain item is going to come up or also no item at all. Really? Okay. And every 10, every, every 10th time like a, a moblin or a bokoblin or whatever, a bokoblin is defeated, they spawn a bomb. And that's oh, what that hint's trying to like say. Okay. Tenth enemy has the bomb. But this is the one, it's in level seven, um, that I think no one would ever be able to truly translate without a, a guide or something. Or if you're just playing the game, that you I don't think anyone would pull well, this off. Level seven like Ganon's castle or Ganon's it's just before. Okay. Eight, eight is Ganon's castle. Seven is a, a castle, a, a a dungeon, I guess. They weren't calling them dungeons back then, they were calling them levels. But yeah. um a, a dungeon that is sometimes referred to as the demon dungeon. They, they're just numbered in the game, but then there has been like colloquially there's yeah, been there's names been like put names. to each one. Yeah, yeah the turtle or whatever. Like Zelda dungeon. Sure. So this is when you find the old man and he says, there's a secret in the tip of the nose. Now, I don't think I actually found this one in person when I've played the game. I, I could have sworn I beat that level. I think I went through all of the game except for Ganon's, like Ganon's fort, whatever it's called in the original Zelda. But I... I I definitely used walkthroughs for that, for that portion of the game. So my little confession here is I did organically think of including the old man in my list and his crazy hints that don't make any sense and pull you out of the game. And then uh -huh. I did a little bit of research on it. And that's when I found this. There's a secret in the tip of the nose quote. And I don't think I've ever encountered that um, quote yet. Or maybe I haven't. I didn't notice. But this is what it's trying to say. So it also it pulls you out. You're like, what? The tip of the nose? What? My nose? Yeah. Link's nose? A nose? Is there a rock face somewhere? Like maybe there's, you know, some, there's, sometimes they'll refer to the coast of a place or a, so a like, cliff or a whatever. Yeah. It's like maybe like a Dodongo or something. So there's mm -hmm. Dodongo just like smoke. But right. yeah, there's a lot of like proper noun ones where if you don't know what yeah. the Dodongo is, it makes no sense at all. Yes. Um, but anyway, so this one is the, again, there's a secret in the tip of the nose. And what it's referring to, I have a graphic here that I'm going to show you. What it's referring to is the layout of the dungeon, of the level, vaguely resembles a face, and vaguely way out where the nose would be is an extra room. Wow. But you don't see that face image until you've gone to all the rooms and it's starting to print on your map when you go to the pause yeah, screen. Right. And furthermore, once you've even done that, Andy, this is the shape of the level. Does that really look like a face to you? That's a that's supposed to be a face. <laughs> so and look, this is this is the nose here where my finger's tapping. I know that this is an audio podcast. That's where the secret is. This is what's supposed to be interpreted as uh -huh. a nose to the player, and they're supposed to realize that, that that the 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 tip of the nose is the secret. Means go to this room right that's here. That's just a random Tetris shape. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. and and so I mean, I never I, I I found this in my research, and I was like, okay, well, that that is so vague, and and there's no. There's almost no way it, or an organic playthrough is going to find that or even yeah. interpret this level as a face, which is also has to be implied by just saying or it needs to be um, inferred just by having the word nose be in the hint. There's like so many levels of 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 deduction that have to happen to make this. I can't anything. even remember. Were there such things like there was, there was such thing as the compass? Was there such thing as the dungeon map in the original Zelda games? I think you maybe would get a map. Yes, I remember the graphic. Yeah. It, so it, does it show you the existence of the room? Like the, the, the rooms second. exist. So maybe you could see that there was kind of room, but just not how to get to Wait it. Wait a second. Maybe you don't get a map until a link to the past. Maybe. You, I'm think I think I'm accidentally remembering the sprite of the kind of half rolled I'm, up map. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a past. compass. I think because I th I think it pulls, puts a little skull or something to show you where the boss is. But yes, you just, but until you've gotten around the room, it's just kind of like pointing at a random black in the random black box that, that is your map. Yep, there's definitely a compass. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So anyway, 
Um, I, we can keep moving here, but there's a secret in the tip of the nose. I, I hope this isn't unfair because it wasn't a personal experience that pulled me out of a game, but my other experiences of the tips, Eastmost Peninsula, I had no idea what that meant when I was yes. like a kid playing through or even an adult playing through. I mean, you kind of go, okay, I guess I go to the east. I guess you can kind of deduce a, a peninsula in the graphics somewhere and things like that, but then what to do or how to do it is so vague. But that one, if I received... The secrets in the tip of the nose in an organic playthrough. I don't think I would know what to do with and that. And that's at all. your number three. I'm kind of excited to hear your other two because that, that that that's good. I would have never <laughs> I would have never thought to pull out something like that. That's, I go that's I go cool. a little more classic for two and one. <laughs> they may be a little less. Um, this maybe was like a deep cut to be honest. But anyway, what's your number three? Uh, so number three, uh, my number three. What I had so far was the. Um, so there's one quote from Wind Waker. So I'm I'm just gonna read it aloud. So it says. When the hero of time was called to embark on another journey and left the land of Hyrule, he separated from the elements that made him a hero. It is said that at that time, the Triforce of Courage was split into eight shards and hidden throughout the land. So that's referring to the eight shards of the Triforce of Courage you have to find in Wind Waker. But we know at the end of Ocarina of Time, um, Link is sent back, like Zelda just sends him back to relive his, quote, childhood. Mm -hmm. So Link basically no longer exists in the adult timeline. So hero of time... Don't not just no longer cease to exist, and that probably doesn't make sense to common folk, right? So it kind of makes sense that legends would kind of um, come about about why the hero of time disappeared, right? But what always confused me and like just made me go like, no, that that is that that is not right. It's just <laughs> it it just says the Triforce of Courage is split into eight shards and hidden throughout Hyrule. Because I, I, initially I was under the impression that the hero of time before leaving Hyrule mm -hmm. split it up himself. So I. Remember, remembering back to Wind Waker, that was what, what my mind immediately jumped to. So maybe it was me just misinterpreting it. So this is kind of a biased, uh, maybe. To me, it feels uh, like a reference to the first Legend of Zelda, where was it? Is it power gets split into eight pieces? Is that? Um, it's only it's not power because I think Ganon still courage? has. I think I think the I think in the original Zelda, it's wis is it wisdom? It's only one of them. Maybe. No, it's 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 yeah, it's courage that split because in Zelda two, it's you have to go. I think get. Uh, was the Triforce of Wisdom? Oh, okay. I, I, if I if I'm remembering correctly. Well, definitely, definitely that, that one. It, yeah, definitely, you build a single triangle out of eight pieces in the first game. So th those instructions, that's like what kind of not triggers for me, but that's what like really my reference goes to. But you're talking about on the back end of the timeline. Um, yes, it doesn't line up. Is that right? Yeah, because there's just so much speculation. There. I mean, you can say that about about pretty much any part of the Zelda franchise. Uh, <laughs> It, it's it's just very confusing. Like, how was this Triforce split? Because we know like something happened when Link was sent back into the into the child timeline, essentially. So, so Link is shown to have that Triforce of Courage. So does he? He can't take the Triforce from one timeline to another because they both exist in both timelines. Oh, I that, see. So there's, I a, see, there's I some see. kind of weird. So there's so when that happens, okay. Did Link take the Triforce with them, and then something broke, or did this Triforce just shatter and go to random places? We don't know because it, it's it's just so confusing to figure out how that all works out. It's it's kind of cool it's, to have the theory potential, but just the this, this quote here where it just yeah, simply says yeah. that it that, oh it was just split into eight shards and hidden it makes it imply like it was an intentional thing, like someone intentionally split the Triforce it does sound and, and hit it because when you find it in like someplace like a ghost ship. Like so maybe some pirates found, the, but mm -hmm. there's also just random chests in Hyrule or you see, there, I can't remember all of them, like all eight pieces off the top of my head, but they're just really obscure things where sometimes you could tell like they it seems like they were intentionally put there and you have to go find them. But it doesn't make any sense on why they're there because you think someone like if yeah. Zelda or someone when he, they were sent back in time was able to obtain Link's piece of the Triforce to per maintain the Triforce's exist his existence in that timeline. Mm -hmm. She would have been a little bit more careful, like because uh, Tetra's ancestors they s split the Triforce of Wisdom into two pieces as well. So maybe something like that happened. But why they're all scattered, just completely random? Because you can't, yeah. Having Link fish just random chests out of the bottom of the ocean, that's not really a heroic te challenge or test. That's just you. You're just losing the, the Triforce at that point. <laughs> I, I feel like it, it's it's not a it's not a very responsible way to deal with it. So some. <laughs> It's just confusing. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's, unless it just it, it exploded off of Link's hand as he was teleported back in time, and like, oh, Triforce is gone. Someone will have to find it later on in history when <laughs> after the flood happens. Do you know what I'm realizing? I don't know. 
Yeah, it, bo- a, it bothers me. <laughs> from a lore point of view, I totally get it. I think from a game mechanics point of view, I'm just realizing that the Triforce quest in Wind Waker is almost a precursor to what ends up being like the Tears of Light stuff in Twilight Princess. And then, of course, the the, the other tiers that you collect yeah. in Skyward Sword and stuff like that. That makes some sense. It's essentially the whole, esen- essentially what I'm real. There's no lore connection there. There's nothing like yeah. that. But you can see how the designers were like, oh, Just from a mechanic uh, standpoint, though. go collect a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's have a part where you go collect a bunch of stuff. I feel like in Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess, where the, like the the tears of light and like the Silent Realm uh, stuff comes into play, uh, I think it's a lot more refined. Where it's like you don't have to go across the entire overworld. It's like little designated portions at a time. I agree completely. I think it is and more to refined. find what you have one task, whereas you have to go find a ghost ship. So you have to go just fish out random chests from the. I I know there's more. I, I just am not it's, familiar enough with Wind Waker at playing through it to name yeah. them off the top of my head. And and the people, the original creators of Wind Waker, I'm not going to put this on a Numa or put this on a single person, but the original creators have admitted that the that Triforce quest was there to kind of pad out the game a little bit because they were yeah. on a deadline for that game. So maybe maybe the way it lines up with the lore, maybe it's just not quite elegant. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I actually just recently had a, another podcast-style conversation with um, another, I think it's, yeah, Pixel Fusion Productions. He's done a few of these, like, Let's Talk episodes where he gets, like, maybe six to eight uh, Zelda YouTubers, and we kind of just talk about, like, talk for, like, an hour or two about a specific topic. That's amazing. So Yeah, so we kind of talked about, last one, we talked about um, weapon durability for Breath of the Wild and how it's going to, how we would like to see it implement in Tears of the Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, before the episode started, we were kind of going back and forth, and kind of apparently most of them, like H, like I don't know if you're familiar with HMK, Hy- you know yep. Hyrule Gamer. Yep. Um, there's a few, a couple others in there too, but they all apparently despise despise Twilight Princess. Whoa, really? Yes, and Twilight Princess is perhaps my favorite Zelda game. I think it is my favorite. Yeah, like I, I, ha- I think I had it. I have a lot of nostalgia with Skyward Sword because it was my first 3D Zelda game, and I acknowledge its flaws. It still has my favorite store from the story and lore yeah. contribution standpoint. But from an overall gameplay experience, I think Twilight Princess definitely takes the cake in my book. But and I don't like Wind Waker. And they're like talking about how Wind Waker is like one of the greatest Zelda games, and I'm we're basically making these counter arguments and like they're t- saying how Twilight Princess is a knockoff of Ocarina of Time's dungeons, and, and I it it was baffling me wow. hearing some of these things. And, and I I like I don't agree with them. Uh, and I've had some uh, other com- YouTubers were kind of silent for that part of the conversation. <laughs> and I've had conversations with them, with them since, <laughs> and they were like, "Yo, no, they were completely out of line for that." Oh my gosh! But, oh my uh, gosh! Yeah, I mean, I some mean, people do. Like Hyrule Gamer is going to be listening to this, and he, you're going to get it. You're going to get a long co- a lo- an essay probably. <laughs> to, you're going to have to read in the listener feedback about this, but. <laughs> I, you know, well, and here's the thing. I think different Zelda games speak to different people for different reasons. And there's, yeah. there's a few. I try to not be too negative on any of the Zelda games, but there's a few that I enjoy more than others. And there's a few yeah. that I don't particularly enjoy playing. One of my hot takes is that I really don't like playing A Link to the Past. That one's difficult for me. I just, I, I it's stop, hard. It the, is the a difficult game. The mechanics and the emotions, they, de- they never quite line up for me. So I, I, I make myself play A Link to the Past. I never really kind of want that. to. I kind of, en- out of the 3D games, I actually kind of enjoy it. But in t- from the lore standpoint, it was definitely pre Ocarina of Time before they kind of knew mm-hmm. what they were wanting to do with and had an idea of like Zelda timeline or trying to get any kind of grasp of lore. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of write, they're just writing a generic ge- a video game story. Um, it's not really, it was hardly, yeah. hardly a franchise at that point. That's true. So they've, they've pre- pretty much had a retcon almost all the lore since A Link to the Past, which makes it really confusing since it's still technically part of the timeline. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I, I totally agree. And I also realized that. I think the reasons why I do like the this, a lot of the reasons why I do like Twilight Princess are the ways that it plays off of Ocarina of Time and it feels like a spiritual successor, but is still its own thing with the, all the wolf mechanics and stuff like that. I do think that Twilight Princess was starting to really tip that scale into a hyper um, linear gameplay style in, which was then like really expressed in skyward sword like oh it feels like you can go anywhere in skyward sword and you kind of can but really to progress it's really just beat one two three four and keep on going i think uh other than majora's mask i think skyward actually is one of the smallest overworlds and that's one of my yes. best just looking back i loved experiencing skyloft it's probably one of my favorite overworlds but it's also the smallest and i le- it's the one that leaves me feeling, wow, why isn't there any more of this? And yeah. I know Skyward Sword, they they really prioritize trying to build a lot more lore and a, create a huge backstory to the Zelda franchise. They sp- spent so much time on building the experience that they actually, I feel like, didn't have it leave enough time to actually develop 
a full game. There's a few less dungeons, I think, than I Ocarina kind of, of Time, I kind Twilight of Princess. Though, though Skyward Sword, it is interesting to note. I agree with you completely. That's when Nintendo decided to start caring about lore in the Zelda games, yeah. which is hysterical because there's like 20 games before that. And like, yes. they really they don't really <laughs> care about it. There's a few references here and there, but that's almost Easter egg category yes. territory. But also, it's easy to forget the Skyward Sword's only two games old. It's Skyward Sword Breath of the Wild, Wild. and then Tears what? coming out. It's actually, yeah, so it's only recently, recently in quotes, you know, the last 10 years, yes. that Nintendo's cared about Zelda lore. Oh, man, it's, it's 2023. Skyward came out in 2011 or 12? 11, right? Yeah. Well, oh, I think man, when the HD ago, release yeah. came out, it was basically a 10-year anniversary oh, of, HD? of Skyward yeah, Sword. Yeah, Skyward Sword. So, yeah, it I came out in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, so 2011. Anyways, we're 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 talking way too much. As if we're doing the yes. thing, let's keep going. No, number two, David. <laughs> the truth. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. I feel like we could be recording five episodes tonight. Um. Okay. My number two. Again, I say like I go a little more classic. That three was a deep cut. Um. Even to me, I actually learned about it while I was researching. Yeah. But some of the things that came to mind right away, which is why they're higher up on my list because they had a more personal connection, is um. My number two is the shark in the tank in Ocarina of Time down in the fishing pond. The, the the you you know yeah okay your face is looking yeah, a little yes. interesting yeah the little sprite. yeah Ocarina now there's there's just the, it's like like a two it's just a completely flat yeah. image but if you sink down there and there's just a shark right there like, in the like cage. jaws is just sitting there waiting I did experience that organically playing Ocarina of Time and um and it and it got me but you know even when you like when you go back and play um and then I forgot about it that I had it for a couple years but anyway um. It's one of those, like, it's clearly just a programmer put it in as an Easter egg. Yeah. And it doesn't, I don't know, maybe I'm being too aggressive here to say it doesn't feel like it belongs in a Zelda game. Because honestly, if I would have included anything from Link's Awakening, I probably would have had 90 items <laughs> and things that probably don't, like, quote unquote, belong in a Zelda it's game. It's like or the Oracle games have, like, the Kangaroo and the, yeah. tri- what, is it a Triceratops or some kind of dinosaur you can ride. I think he's technically a dodongo but yes he's basically yeah, okay, yeah, dodongo yeah you're absolutely right uh, so, you know, so anyway so anyway that's a that's a quick one just shark and ocarina okay. of time yeah uh, so i would say the next one here on my oh, i'm, I'm kind of tied between two of them uh because my last one i kind of ripped on wind waker a little bit but uh <laughs> this one it's still going to be uh zora evolving to the so your cat's like right behind my head yeah he's, no, he's just coming around <laughs> really startled me there anyways but yeah the zora evolving to into the rito and the wind waker oh <gasps> Sure. Yeah, we, yes. We talked about this in the discussion. Meet, it, and I, this is probably one of the I, so many people talk about this, and for for a good reason. Why do the Zora evolve? They they are water creatures, <laughs> and evolve when the world floods and is all water. All of a sudden, they become birds when there's no land. They only have one little island. Uh, that they like the Dragon Roost Island. They serve a dragon now. It doesn't make any sense. They were yes, I agree. It's it, kind of it, it, it's evolving. It's like the PewDiePie meme where it's evolving just backwards, kind of. <laughs> the the it's almost it feels it it screams of being a retcon, but yes. it's in the game. It's not a retcon. It's like, yes, <laughs> it's like it's like you they didn't fix see, it later. <laughs> yeah, you literally see um like the the, the spirit of like a La Ruto of a Zora who awakens med, helps medley awaken as a sage. And then I think you talked about the was this episode with Celeste who's kind of like a a ko- kokiri with the, yeah. the Korok sage. Yes, Korok sage. Yeah, I actually kind of have a theory. Um, I don't really have the evidence with me to suggest this, but I've been, have the, had this theory for three years now. Have not made a video about it. I'm just I don't want to go down, about on the, the tangent, children yes. turning into. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to go off too. But basically, yeah. that the Kor- the Koroks basically always existed. But uh, when Link was brought in as an infant to the Deku Tree, um, they bas- he basically disguised the Kokiri, or sorry, the Koroks as Kokiri, as just so Link wouldn't be so alienated. I mean, that's kind of uh, cool. Because at, at another point, there's always just like living plants. So you kind of have the Kikui who are like animal plant hybrids. But I, I, I had a few other reasons I could just how it could be possible. You might but, be onto something there. I yeah, think. it's like I, I'd have to go through and like dig all that out from three years ago. Because there was Cause it's, you could, I, you could, it's not solid, but. Well, there's that, there's also that reverse thing about people going into the Lost Woods, people going into the Lost Woods and turning into plants and trees. Maybe whatever that magic that makes that happen, maybe there is, maybe... Do they turn into plants and trees? I thought it was just Stolfos and uh, oh, Skull Kids. I... Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Link's mom turning into a tree. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, and that, that was a, and that, that's a theory, too. Uh, I because mean, it's, because it's only yeah. in the comics? Is yeah. that what it is? Uh, oh. I mean, yeah, because I, I I always have to say, just man, my YouTube videos, there's so many things, especially Majora's Math. Like, oh, there's this in the manga, so that you can use that, or you're wrong because this was in the manga. Oh my like, goodness! 
the mangas are great. Don't get me wrong. I, I just bought the entire box set of them, <laughs> uh, but it's not canon. I think the Twilight Princess one is. It, I, I've have not really gotten much into it, but it seems fantastic. From well, a, that's I'm actually reading that right now. I'm on the fifth, uh, the fifth volume of like whatever it is. I still need to buy them. So I think the last volume comes out in just a few months. Ooh. So I'm probably just gonna wait to, for that to release, and then I'll just buy an entire box set. Yeah. When they all come out. So okay, cool. Well, okay, Link's Mama Tree. Okay, fine. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna go to my final here. Yeah, your first. Yeah, number one. I don't know if this is the craziest. But I think it kind of is. I think just everybody knows about it. But it was the very first thing that I was like, yes, this is on my list no matter what. And 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 I guess I'll reference its appearance in Majora's Mask, even though it appears in a couple other games. But it's Mr. Toilet Hand. <laughs> yes. I thought about putting that one on there. I, I think I was going to put that as an honorable mention. But The first time playing Majora's Mask and, and, and having that hand pop up, definitely... <laughs> I was like, I was just wrapping my head around the logic of it. Like, why is it a ghost? What's, is it not? Is it a person? Now, I, I know we've all kind of learned through the zeitgeist that it's a reference to a kind of a mythical little creature in Japan, cult, Japanese culture or something like that. I don't remember the name of this creature, but that's yeah. kind of what it was riffing on. I thought it was a dead hand, not going to lie. I thought it was going to be some kind of like knockoff of a dead hand just coming out of the toilet. <laughs> well, then it sticks because of course, of course it's in Skyward Sword, but before that it actually appeared in Oracle. I think it's Oracle of Ages, maybe it's Seasons, but there's also a little graphic in Oracle of, I'm, I'll just say Ages for the sake of the show here, um, the dead, no. Wait, I was playing seasons. Doesn't matter. One of the Oracle <laughs> games, and so um, this this crazy toilet hand pops up three times in Zelda games. They wow. do. They riff on it. They they play on it with Skyward Sword. They actually kind of subvert your expectations with the hand in Skyward Sword from what you think yeah. it's supposed to do. But nevertheless, um, creep, creepy toilet hand asking for paper coming from the underside of what appears to be an outhouse. It's classic. That was definitely if if there was a if there if if you know Zelda games have a lot of like I guess you could say like WTF moments. That was a moment for me where I was like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> what is happening?" So so even though I think a lot of people know, everybody knows about Toilet Hand. I had it at the top of my list. Yeah, um, I had I had a really good one from Majora's Mask. I kind of want to throw it as an honorable mention, but instead I think I I think my number one though. Real quick, I also so have wrong. like four or five honorable mentions. So after we do oh, okay. your one, we'll rip through we'll just, some yeah, honorable mentions. Yeah, go through. Okay. Um, because I feel, I feel like this one's just so so much worse. Like, why did Nintendo put this in? It's actually from Breath of the Wild. Oh. So, I don't know if you recall, but there was actually a side quest. I can't remember what it... Oh, I don't remember what the name of the side quest was. Sure. But essentially, there's like a, quote, child, Sora. Um, and, they're, they're, and then another Hylian. And basically, they're writing love letters to each other from down the river. They're like putting bottles or messages and floating them down the river. I have and so, they fall this. in love just by writing messages to each other um, by sending them down up and down the river. And... Uh, so you eventually think people plays matchmaker and they, they meet in person and they, you, they thank you for, and they become a couple and it's like a child appearance or an adult Hylian. And there's like kind what? of a lo- potential love interest reference between uh, Mifa and Zelda, but people like justify it because well in Zora years, cause the Zora live a lot longer than Hylians. Well, yeah. they're basically, they're, they're the same age. It's just the one looks like, and I, I don't know. Oh, that's boy. still, that's still, that's still bored. That's still very borderline. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sketchy for Nintendo to do. I'm like, why? Like, why would you, why do you have to include that? Like, you could maybe get, get out on a technicality there, but it's like shipping adult Link with Sari. They're childhood friends, but Kokiri remain children. You, you, oh, no, that's Andy. just wrong. You're bringing the edge to this episode. You had the yeah. great fairies. You had you have this. Yeah, I know. It's like for, <laughs> I, it's, I feel like I'm going more to the inappropriate parts of Zelda. I'm like, why Nintendo? It's a kids' game. It's a chi- it's you're a family friendly franchise. You take pride in that. You. I cut mean, out dark stuff so you can say you're a family friendly company. Yeah. So like, okay. So what is a ten year old? Uh, we know what a human ten year old is. What is a Zora ten year old? If, if it's like a tadpole, it depends on what point <laughs> of view, know, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a ten year. You know, we don't, we don't, we talk about our dogs and cats having like dog ears and cat ears, but essentially, like Schrodinger, my cat, he's fourteen years old. He's in old age now. You know, he's an old man, old man yeah, cat. Like Link's eighteen, but like Mifa may have been like what a hundred? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, whoa! You're whoa! You're right. Link and Mifa yeah. might even be weird. Yeah, <gasps> no, no, very, very weird. Actually. Oh my gosh! Like, I never side, thought about that. Sidon's a little baby, but maybe he's probably maybe like he could still probably be like 10, 20 years old in Zor- and highly in years or human years. But oh my but he's, goodness, he's, he's a little 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 boy. All right, and, well, uh, I, I I don't want to drill down on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. It's like no, I'm mean, just like it's so disturbing. It's like we don't really want to go want to go into that. But it's like just Nintendo, like. Why? 
There, Why there must have been that? a logic. Must have been a piece of logic somewhere. Maybe it was like the the maturity levels of these people of these creatures. But quite <laughs> frankly, oh, what is it? Um, yeah, I don't. Like I said, I don't want to go too far. But like when we refer to the Zoras and Gorons and Hylians, I think we refer to them as races, not as species. Isn't that right? Yes. Which implies that there could be r- romance, not because it's not interspecies. Yeah. I think a link between worlds actually. Put hints at a crossbreed because I was like, um, can't remember his name is, but the the Gora dude who awakens basically as one of the sages. He kind of looks like he has like the Goron emblem on his belt, <gasps> uh, but he 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 has human like no, right. features, but he has he's built like like a Goron. You're he right. has like almost like tough, rocky looking skin, but he's like a human. So and he has the Goron emblem literally on his belt. So I totally remember that. Yeah, uh, we'll leave that at yes. that. <laughs> we'll leave that at yes. that. Let's do some honorable mentions. Um, I'm gonna just push through some i've got a uh, camaro's mask in majora's mask was one of mine the literal mask so it covers link's face and has the head sticking out of the forehead camaro's head. oh yeah it looks creepy i honestly love the dance though it's, it's kind of dance it's is funny. a ton of fun the mask that you have to wear to do it is camaro's bust micro microscopic like two three inches tall coming out of link's forehead and then link's face is covered yeah with just like, skin tone how do you see th- how does he see through that magic i guess um but yeah. we actually mentioned i didn't put it on this list because kate and i talked about camaro's mask as like in like the weird items episode that we did oh okay um, that's fair. another one that i've got here real quick is the elvis the elvis dancer in wind waker i don't even remember what that character's name is the oh, one who's yeah, like dancing looking right. at the i call it the elvis dancer because <laughs> the reason i have that as an honorable mention is because just the aesthetics of the clothing are so outside no, I, of, I, I totally remember that character like and i don't remember a lot of wind waker and that that i do so oh i had i have the shifting gravity in forest temple Mm. Shifting you know the down. first time you go through the spiral uh oh, walkways um, ocarina yeah, yeah, yeah. what did i say majora oh no, no in the forest temple, temple in ocarina temple. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of forest temples that's true um that's uh, maybe that's kind of like a whoa what is happening kind of moment and then of course you know we all know about it but the mario mask in majora's mask is kind of like an easter egg that might take you out of the game a there's little bit. there's also an elvis mask on, on his back too and i believe darth maul from star wars no I'm pretty sure it was Darth. Oh, was it Darth Maul? Because Phantom Menace wasn't very old. Well, there but definitely it definitely is a red and black, black mask. Black, black, black and red. And I read that it was supposedly maybe. I don't. I don't know. Supposed to be Darth Maul. So, but so that may, maybe Menace I'm wrong. Came out when, in 1999 when I was just graduating high school. So Majora's and Mask was a, two, a that, two, 2000. So yeah. it's possible. Could've like been. I could it could have been, but that that's what I've read online. Is it was reportedly. You know, the team did have to remake the Happy Man, Happy Salesman, Happy Mask Salesman model for Majora's Mask because he, the, the backpack and putting all those masks on are you that character is unique to Majora's Mask. The character model in Ocarina doesn't have the backpack. I think isn't that yes. right? So well, maybe they did kind of just wing it and throw some crazy masks I, on there. I think in the N sixty four version too, when you know how he says his final words about like departure and stuff, he turns away and he just kind of just fades into nothingness, just in the closing cutscene. Right? Yes, I do remember that. Um, I think in the N64 version, there's like a glitch where basically like the rest of him disappears faster. So you can kind of see just like the inside of it, the back of his face oh. disappear faster. I noticed that like going through the cutscenes. I'm like, oh, I think, I think I can speak to that. I thought because I thought it was another mask that just suddenly popped up on the back of his mask as like he started just to disappear. Yep. But then I but then like, I had to point out it's just a glitch where you can see in the inside of his face model. And I, 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 I can surmise or I can guess why. Um, so when the, the, a lot of times when in the early days or mid days, I guess Majora's Mask came out a little bit later in the Nintendo's life cycle, but with Nintendo 64 games, there was, um, a lot of times when they would introduce transparencies, they'd have a, a character model fade out. The transparency variable was assigned to every single polygon that made the character and they would turn down or, or, or turn up the transparency, um, on each of those polygons equally as they go. This happens in a lot yeah. of games where characters fade in and out. You technically, so if you if you're looking at let's say the back of the Happy Mask Salesman's head, that back is fading down. When that hits fifty percent opaque or fifty percent transparent, you're half seen through it, and then seeing the half transparent front so of the ba- face. It's basically just individual keyframing, essentially of of every single polygon. Yeah. Later, they started to be able to create like alpha alpha channels over the entire model, and that's when you would get models fading in and out. Where you don't fade, they don't they don't become like a hollow man or, or like the invisible man where you can like see through yeah. everything and I think that's what's going on there. I've got to say, David, it kind of impresses me like how much you know of like the behind the scenes that actually goes into game development, like the software engineering part, like the computer. Like it, it really impresses me how much you know because well, like like I I don't think just a few years ago I know I didn't know what it meant when in terms of like a three D you take a three D model I don't 
didn't know what it meant when you make polygons because most people just think, oh, you just create a sphere in a three D in a three D modeling software. Yeah. No, it's just you have to have like thousands and thousands of like uh, vertices essentially to create a sphere. You in, the, in CAD software you can go in and customize and just to make it. If the less you have, the more rigid it looks. But uh, oh, like the N sixty four the processor wasn't is was obviously much older and wasn't as advanced. Yeah. Uh, so it couldn't process like creating a perfect sphere. You had like these octagonal shapes. And also yeah. at the time I was in I was in college when these games were coming out, when this technology was happening, when 3D games at all was happening, I was essentially an adult and I was able to really study this stuff and learn about it and, okay. and hold it in. But also in AZP, in just like this show, I'm actually when we started making this show back in the end of 2017, it's not that I didn't care about lore. But I kind of didn't care about lore. <laughs> like I, I didn't. I was. I was all. I was totally the game mechanics person. It was all about how the games got made. Um, the 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 you know from one game to the next, what parts of the engine were used, and to a large degree, I've, I mean, I'm I'm kind of becoming a, more of a fan with the lore by making this show. So these days now, I care about the storylines and things like that. But. But before making AZP, I didn't care what the story was. In see, I'm game. the exact opposite. Like, I know. After doing it, it's like I, I was all lore. And now it's like I, I still don't actively search out like all these little fun facts, but I thoroughly enjoy learning them. I'm, not, I'm never going to like make that my primary source of content because it's oh, it feels like so much work to go learn. Because at this point, the games are so old. Yeah. Most of that stuff's been. But still, like you, you've made that entire behind this making of Ocarina, which is fascinating. Well, I tried. I used to try to do one behind the scenes episode a season. And then I think we didn't do it for season three and four. Um, because those also used to be episodes that I always would want to do with Kate. But again, now that the team is bigger, I feel like season six, we got to do a behind the scenes. I kind of want to do a behind the scenes of Wind Waker, but um, there's another one out there too. Majora's Mask good. would be pretty interesting. We, we've done, I did the original Zelda and Ocarina, and that might've been it so far. Yeah, I think I think so. I don't, I remember, I definitely remember both of those. What are some of your um, honorable mentions there on the list? Um, so I think there's only a, one or two of them that I haven't covered actually. On, uh, so there was Macau. Macau singing his woes right before his death. So you find up, find Macau just kind of floating, uh, lifeless, in the Great Bay, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So you, yes. got, you, you kind of have to just like push him onto shore, and when you do, he walk gets up, walks, and then just like falls to the ground. So you play the song of he, or I don't know if you play the song. No, you talk to him. He's like, hey, uh, I got attacked by pirates. He's like, hey, I'm I'm dying. But let me tell you what happened through song. And he gets up and just, there's these, the sound effects. Oh, the guitar. Just, he gets up and he's like, you just hear like the bossa nova. Dun, 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 dun. And then just like after he finishes, he, you press A to go to the next verse. He just goes, yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what the sound effect uh, does. And yeah. I'm just like, what? He, this dude's dying. Yeah. And he's up here playing a song on his guitar and then he just falls to the ground. If he had the energy to do that, you think he could have just like, hey, just calmly while laying on the ground, you say conserved all that energy, energy. to like still live. Yeah. He spent it, man. Yeah. He spent it and, and went he, for it. He, he was he was a musician. He just he said this is the only way I know how to express. express it. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's ah. that's funny. Well, we should get going. This this episode was a ton yes. of fun. We still have that second one to record. Um, um, yeah. I don't know. I was about to say any closing comments on on some of these oddities or whatever. I think you know that's one of the things I can say this probably the one of the things that there's always every single Zelda game has five to 50 things that that are super weird and and sometimes yeah. you don't even notice it in context at the time sometimes i remember playing like even just ocarina of time and my sisters would walk into the room and, and watch and then they would kind of be like that is a super what's up with that super weird thing you're kind of like because you're so deep into the game you're not even thinking about it and you're like whoa there's a lot of weird stuff in, in all zelda games and i think that's fun i think it's part of the charm of the franchise yeah. you know Oh my god! Well, you just, I had just had an epiphany. Yeah, you just made a face. I, I, I totally forgot. I didn't even put this on my list, and I know we're trying to wrap up the episode. My last honorable mention. So I don't know if you know this, and maybe it's exclusive to Ocarina of Time 3D, but you know the, the courtyard, how um, you know how they oh, used to the, be the, the pictures, the, the pictures. Yeah, they they did change it. They changed it to in Ocarina of Time 3D to like a 3D, like I think it's like the Super Mario 3D World for the three. They changed it to that, but on the other side of the courtyard, mm -hmm. where it's just like a blank window. If you shoot it like with your, uh, I think it's your boomerang or no, no, your you sling, probably have your slingshot. Your, your slingshot. If you yeah. shoot it with your slingshot, um, a guard, castle guard, will appear in the window. He says, "Hey, cut it out there!" And then he throws a bomb at you. Really? Yes. It's Whoa. just a, it's just a very fascinating concept because I like it scared me because all of it just all of a sudden this guard pops out of nowhere. It's like, "Hey, cut it out!" Yeah, and that's, that's it's, funny. I love it. Did they add that for the 3D one? You're saying? Uh, I I don't know if it was in the uh, I gotta, if it was in the N64, but I, I discovered it now. while playing uh, Ocarina of Time 3D. I see, just poking around and stuff. Yeah, that's so. cool. So yeah, Zelda has all of it in all of its weirdness. It has tons of charms, plenty of oddities, and. Uh, 
and they never bother me. They well, like I guess for a few that pull me out of the game, like we put in this list here, they never really bother me. Usually, I think these things are pretty charming. When when Zelda yeah. gets weird, I almost had the the giants from Majora's Mask. They're super strange. Yes. I almost had that on my list. But also, that's kind of like what we love about the series too. I think. Yeah, it's just so obscure. Like maybe if they were to make a animated series or a movie, like they would need to change some things just to make make it make sense. But for, from a video game concept. Well, even yep. Schrodinger's telling yep. us yep. to finish. Yep, we're done. <laughs> um, well, yeah, 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 I know. Gotta, yeah, they would, they would, it almost gets too weird when you get outside of the game graphics. Yes. Andy, I know that we're going to record another episode, but for the people who are just listening to this episode, um, why don't you tell them where they can find you, how they can get in touch with you, all that kind of stuff. Uh, primarily just uh, YouTube. I'm not really too active on uh, Instagram. That's usually just to promote my, uh, my YouTube, essentially. So I would say you can follow me just on YouTube. Uh, just search Zelda and you'll find a bunch of my videos or my channel page. And if you... Uh, just want to get directly there, just youtube.com slash at symbol Zelda. Yeah, great. Uh, wonderful. Yeah. Love it. Um, people can find the show. They can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Raptor Paint, all that, all that normal stuff. Um, but they can find the show on Instagram at Another Zelda Podcast, on Twitter at Another Zelda Pod. Um, you know, I was actually doing, I was going through this list um, when I was recording a different episode with another person and I was got halfway through it and they were like, just Google another Zelda podcast, the, <laughs> the whole first page. You're going to find what you're looking yeah. for. <laughs> no, I think was, was that the, was that the last episode or maybe two episodes? I don't, I don't even remember at this point, but it was um, pretty recent. It was, it was, yeah. And, and so anyway, but, but if you're looking directly, yeah, we're another Zelda podcast on Instagram, another Zelda pod, Twitter, you can find us on YouTube and Facebook and all the podcast providers by just typing in another Zelda podcast. You'll find us go to our yep. website, another Zelda podcast.com to read blog blogs some of which Andy himself here has has written and a bunch of our other people on our team have put a bunch of blogs there obviously we have all of our episodes there and a few other fun things as well um Andy uh, this was this was tons of fun I, I'm so this is your first day in Chicago first yes. day on an AZP episode I can't wait to um have you experience the city just a little bit more of the next couple what do you hear through Sunday or something like that? uh we're leaving Sunday morning Sunday so. morning yeah, yeah yeah interesting um so with all that said uh this was a total pleasure and I'll see you next time. Yep. And about, about 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was but trying for, to, for another episode. I was trying yeah. to cue you up for the, uh, the closing line. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Sorry.